Hi, this is my 44th video on helping people study for actuarial exam 2. For the first 43 videos, I've been doing problems from the Mathematics of Investment and Credit by Samuel Broverman. Um, but for this video, I decided to change books and look at a problem from The Theory of Interest by Stephen Kellison. Uh, the reason being that, well, I was in, in Broverman in section 2.2. They do get into um, the idea of a continuous annuity. But the problem selection at the end of chapter 2 related to continuous annuities uh, seemed pretty sparse, and the few problems related to it were pretty hard. I wanted something more basic, so I found Kellison's book and looked at this problem as what I wanted to start with as an example of a continuous annuity. We're going to use the present value of a continuous annuity in this problem to determine how, money, how long money will last. What is a continuous annuity? It's, it's an annuity where money is paid continuously, Every second of every day, every millisecond of every day, you might say. Is that realistic? Well, it can be realistic in certain situations, maybe where you've got big companies or governments where money is flowing all the time. It can also be a gateway to more advanced um, perspectives on finance. Here is the problem statement. <clears throat> uh, Kellison does tend to use dollars, so we'll go ahead with his statement here. There's $40,000 in a fund. And that's accumulating at 4% per annum, which means per year. Convertible continuously, that means uh, the interest is compounding continuously. It really means the 4% is a force of interest. We have talked about force of interest before. Delta. This is delta. If money is withdrawn continuously, every second of every day, every millisecond of every day, at a rate of $2,400 per annum, again, that means per year, how long will the fund last? <clears throat> All right, this is really a, a, a new concept. This is a concept of a continuous income, income stream or payment stream, in this case a withdrawal stream. Let's get our minds about what around what's really going on here. We've got time on this axis, say in, in years, and we've got not money on the vertical axis, but instead of a rate of money, uh, cash flow you could call it, in say dollars per year. And it's a continuous cash flow. It's not occurring at discrete moments in time. It's con occurring continuously. If I graph a horizontal line at 2400, that doesn't mean $2400 is being paid out at any one moment in time, but continuously in such a way that over the course of any given year you get paid $2,400. What would that mean in terms of money per day or hour or minute? Well, let's think about that. $2,400 over a year, if I divide by say 365.25 as the average number of days in a year, that corresponds to about $6.57 a day. I could have maybe divided by 360 instead to make it nicer, but I went ahead and divide by 365.25. If I divide that by, say, 24, that corresponds then to 27 cents, approximately, per hour. Dividing that by 60 would give you about oh, a little less than half a cent per minute, etc. I could divide that by 60 to get the number of dollars per second, okay? These amounts, of course, get tinier and tinier as the intervals get tinier and tinier, but, you know, you keep dividing by any positive amount, it's never going to equal zero. Of course, you know, you don't make payments in, you know, fractions of a cent, but again, it's an idealization. What would be the tiny amount that would flow, or be withdrawn in this case, over a tiny amount of time? Say that time that, time that we're going to with, make the withdrawal over a tiny amount of time is t. And let's imagine the tiny amount of time is called dt. Now, you should have had calculus before you're learning about this stuff, and this should be familiar you're familiar from calculus. dt is sometimes called a differential. It's sometimes called an infinitesimal. I'm going to call it an infinitesimal. It's what we could say is an infinitesimally small amount of time, smaller than, than you can imagine, OK? Now, technically speaking, in the real number system, the standard real number system, the idea of an infinitesimally small positive quantity is a fiction, okay? It doesn't exist. 
It's just an idealization in your mind that allows you to um, conceptualize the ideas that flow from it in an intuitive way uh, that gets you to the answer pretty quickly and also helps you just sort of intuitively understand things. If we were going to be more rigorous, we would call it maybe delta t instead of dt, and we talk about Riemann sums and that kind of thing. But here we're going to ultimately we're going to avoid Riemann sums and we're going to sort of add up some things via an integral right away. It's an intuitive way of approaching it that's really not rigorous in the standard real number system, but we don't worry about it. So that's the tiny amount of time that elapses. The units still are going to be years. How much cash flows during that tiny tiny amount of time? It would be the height, height of the rectangle times the width. It would be the area of the rectangle. The tiny amount of money that would flow, which you might call dA, during that tiny amount of time would be $2,400 per year times dt years. The years would cancel and you'd be left with 2,400 dt dollars would be the tiny amount of money that would flow or be withdrawn in this case during that tiny amount of time. What is the tiny present value of that tiny amount of money at that moment gone back to time zero. You might call that DPV or something, tiny present value. Well, it would be, um, take the discount factor, the annual discount factor of V, say, and raise it to the T power. Now, T doesn't have to be a whole number here, but that's okay. We can still multiply it by V to the T to get the tiny present value at time zero of this tiny amount. We could write V to the T dA, which would be 2400 V to the T dT. And if we want to make use of the force of interest here, delta, we should recall that uh, V is equal to E to the negative delta. And that's going to be useful because we're ultimately going to want to integrate this to get the total present value of the entire income stream. Um, so, you know, having E involved in the integral is going to make the integral easier to do. So we can go ahead and make that substitution. And let me go ahead and replace delta with 0 0.04. The tiny present value of this tiny flow of money present value at time zero would be 2400, 2400 e to the negative 0 0.04 t dt. And yeah, now the entire present value of the entire income stream would be found by adding up those tiny present values by integrating them. The overall present value would be the integral of 2400 e to the negative 0 0.04 t dt Evaluated from zero to that time, say, maybe I'd want to use a different letter here for my integral, but ultimately I'm going to want to find the present value up to some unspecified time n, um, because I'm wondering, I want to solve this problem, I'm wondering when the money's going to run out, I'm going to wonder what time n will make the present value of this entire income stream equal to the 40,000 that is in the account to begin with. So I'm going to integrate it from zero to un some unspecified time n. I want this to equal $40,000. And I want to solve for the value of n that makes that true. And that will answer the question, how long will the fund last when the 40000 the value in the account at time zero, is the same as the present value of the entire income stream as you withdraw it. OK, so let's go ahead and do this. Do this integral here. Um, we can get 2400 divided by negative 0 0.04 e to the negative 0 0.04 t evaluated t goes from 0 to n okay what is 2400 divided by negative 0 0.04 well 2400 divided by positive 0 0.04 is positive 60,000 so this gives us negative 60,000 e to the negative 0 0.04 t from 0 to n. Now plug in the limits of integration. Um, we'll get negative 60,000 e to the negative 0 0.04 n when, I, when we replace t by n. 
minus negative 60,000 e to the 0 when we replace t by 0. Of course, e to the 0 is 1. Two negatives make a, make a positive. We end up with 60,000 minus 60,000 e to the negative 0 0.04n. So now we solve this equation for n. Oops, I need one more zero here. I can um, subtract 40,000 from both sides and also add 60,000 e to the negative 0 0.04n to both sides. Then divide by 60,000. We're going to get e to the negative 0 0.04n. Uh, should be two thirds. Uh, is that right? Um, so let's see again. I wanted to subtract forty thousand from both sides to get twenty thousand on one third. One third. Yeah. One third. So take the log of both sides, and then divide everything by negative point zero four. N is going to be. 1 divided by negative 0 0.04, natural log of 1 third, which is the same as natural log of 3 divided by positive 0 0.04. We should not expect this to be a whole number. 3, take the natural log, divide by 0 0.04. We get about 27.4653. years, and that is the correct answer. Let me uh, finish the video by saying a couple other things. Um, when the income stream is one dollar per year, or one unit of money per year, the present value that we just found, the integral that we just found without the 24,000 there, and let me write it in the general case, has a symbol. It's A sub N with a bar over it, present value of a continuous income stream of one unit of money per unit of time over n years. It's a continuous income stream. The bar is put over it. I made it kind of big there. It's usually a little smaller, but um, you might think of the bar as being a continuum to remind you that it's a continuous income stream where delta is the force of interest. Turns out this can simplify to one, oh, 1 minus uh, e to the negative delta n divided by delta, or if you prefer, 1 minus v to the n over delta. And that's a formula for that. And let me also remark that this problem can be solved another way. It can be solved with differential equations as well. And let me briefly remark how to, how to do that. You might want to pause the video quick and write down the problem if you forget it, because I'm going to go down here again. If V is the amount of money in the account, the assumptions of the problem say that uh, V satisfies a differential equation, which would be dV dt equals 0.04V, 0 0.04 being the force of interest, minus 2,400, 2,400 being the rate at which money is being taken out in dollars per year. And the initial condition is V of 0 is 40,000. I would encourage you, if you know about differential equations, and in particular separating variables to help you solve this differential equation, confirm that you get the same answer, uh, that the solution of this initial value problem will cross zero when t is about 27.4653. Again, if you know about differential equations and separation of variables, I would encourage you to solve it that way. But once we have this formula, for this present value, it's actually, I mean, you wouldn't have to redo this integral like I did. You could just use this formula right away along with the payment of 2400 and the present value of 40,000 to solve the problem without doing an integral.